In Blender so far, we've created a very straightforward animation, blocking out the keyframes of the motion of the ball along a path. We've also learned how to use the camera view to adjust our rendering to various angles. Now, we'll use an existing add-on already inside Blender to perform the point motion of the ball as it moves along the path. Open the User Preferences dialog once again and find the Animate All plugin and enable it. Save these user settings and then close this dialog. Select the ball in the Scene view and then apply the subdivisions that we've added to the ball. Focus your view of the ball using the scroll wheel and the middle mouse button. Press the T key to open the Sensei panels and then select the Animation tab. Click this Timeline Options tab and select View and disable Show Seconds. This will give us a frame view of the timeline. Click on this small tab and disable Timeline Snap. Use your right mouse button to scroll the time slider. Hold down the Shift key and use your middle mouse button to drag the ball into view. Press Tab to enter Edit Mode, and then select Points. Disable this so you can see through the ball, and enable Proportional Editing. Simply click anywhere on the ball, and then press the G key to grab that vertex. From the Animate All panel, enable Points, and then insert a keyframe, which takes into account the changes we just made to the ball. We'll duplicate this natural shape of the ball every time it reaches the peak of an arc or the trough of an arc. Simply click once to select the frame you want to duplicate, press D, and then drag the duplicated frame to the new cursor location. We're essentially setting landmarks where the ball returns to its natural shape as it moves along the curve. Use the scroll wheel to zoom the view out to get a total view of the scene. As the ball reaches the peak of its arc here, we also need to keep its shape. And here as it hits the top of the boulder. From this point on, the ball will largely retain its shape, so we won't need to set any keyframes here. Once again, use the scroll wheel to zoom the view in on the ball so that we can make these point changes. We'll add a little distortion to the ball as it reaches halfway up to the top of the arc. Simply click any vertex, adjust the size of the influence using the scroll wheel, and stretch the ball as shown. Once you're satisfied with the shape, make sure to press the Insert Key button to insert a keyframe in the timeline. Press the Tab key to return to Object Mode and to update the point changes. Sometimes, as you attempt to duplicate frames, other frames may also be selected. These unwanted selections will be automatically deselected when you select a new frame. Once you've corrected your selection, simply press D on the keyboard to duplicate the desired frames. When duplicating frames, you can select these frames, press D, and then drag the selection to anywhere else through many other frames in the timeline. As the ball hits the ground here, we'll distort it slightly to show a rolling motion. At this point, when the ball is just preparing to jump, we'll distort the ball backwards as though winding up for a pitch. As the ball reaches a position about halfway up to the peak of its arc, we'll stretch him extremely, showing speed and power. 
Make sure to press the Insert Keyframe button to register these changes. As we change our view position, we can see that the line of his jump is slightly out of whack. We need to see this from exactly the camera view. Press 0 on the keyboard to get that view. This is very easy to correct. Simply press Tab on the keyboard and then stretch the ball into its proper position. Making sure to press Insert Key. At a lower position in the jump, this also needs correcting. Since we're now sure we're in the camera view, all of our changes are guaranteed to be the right ones. As the ball is about to land on top of the boulder, we'll need to distort it backwards slightly to show speed and motion. Right after the ball lands on the top of the boulder, we'll need to create a squash effect. This will also require a slight hold, because we don't want the ball to be moving as it's squashing. We'll simply select this frame, press D to duplicate it, and then drag it to the left to produce the hold. Then, find a frame where the ball is in its normal shape, press D and duplicate that and drag it forward. From this point, the ball will do a slight rolling motion, so we'll just add some minor distortion as it moves. Keep returning to object mode by pressing Tab. This also updates the point changes we're making, providing us with a shaded preview. As the ball approaches the precipice of the boulder, we'll want to produce another hold so that he can stretch his neck out and see what lies below. Here, we simply select and then duplicate a position frame and drag it into a new position. Press B to box select these frames and then move them out of the way. At this point in time, we'll begin the neck stretch. Use the scroll wheel to scroll the influence way down, providing a more pointed appearance. Having produced this initial stretch, we'll now stretch him even farther so that he can see the bottom of the boulder, causing him to recoil in horror at what he sees. By duplicating and then repositioning a frame, you can place it over an existing frame and it will replace it. When repositioning frames, they tend to snap to the time cursor. So first position the cursor where you want it and then drag the frame. Retaining the camera's view, Let's zoom it out so that we can preview the entire animation we've done so far. The flow of the movement and the shape of the ball seem to be okay, but very slow. Position the cursor at the beginning of the animation Press A to select all frames, and then press S, which will scale these frames toward the timeline cursor. Press play to view the animation again and see the changes. An interesting effect, but still not exactly what we want. Press S again to scale the entire animation proportionally, approaching the time cursor.
Drag the mouse in this field to adjust the looping point of the animation. Making sure that the time cursor is positioned at the beginning of the animation, press S again to proportionally scale the animation toward the cursor. When the frames appear to be too close together in the timeline, you can always scroll the view using the scroll wheel, panning in the view of the timeline by holding Shift and pressing the middle mouse button and dragging. This definitely looks a lot better, but we'll have to do a lot more adjustment to get exactly what we want.